All right, hi guys, welcome to my very first webinar. Um, fingers crossed everything goes well and there aren't any technical difficulties. Uh, first off, thanks for joining me. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Allison Goodman, and today I'm going to discuss the ways in which high school athletes can market themselves to college coaches, and we'll also touch on the parents' role during the recruiting process. Uh, before we dive in, I want to tell you a little bit about me and my background so you know who you're listening to. Um, so again, my name is Allison Goodman. I'm currently the community manager at Be Recruited. For those of you who don't know what Be Recruited is, we're the number one network for high school athletes and college coaches to connect. Before working at Be Recruited, I played Division I golf at the University of California, Berkeley, Go Bears. Um, and coached Division One golf, or yeah, sorry, coached Division One golf for two and a half years at the University of San Francisco, where I recruited um, all over the world. So I kind of have a unique perspective on things, uh, not only because I coached, but also because I, you know, went through the recruiting process myself. So I saw the athlete side and the coach's side. Um, so again, um, today we're going to talk about the ways to market yourself. Uh, before I dive in, um, I just want to say that marketing yourself is a huge part of the recruiting process. Uh, for most athletes, it's not like the movie The Blind Side where coaches are knocking on your door um, and throwing offers at you. It's, uh, that's just not the reality. So the marketing part of this is very important. Um, the first topic we're going to discuss is putting together a personal resume, cover letter, and competition schedule. The second thing we'll discuss is creating a profile on an online athletic recruiting network. The third thing is emailing coaches on a consistent basis. And then the fourth thing is to call coaches and introduce yourself um, as well as schedule an unofficial visit. So this is an example of a resume that um, you know, I received as a coach by an athlete. Um, this is what I would say is a very good example of a resume. So up top, you have your name, your contact information, your high school, graduation year. Those are three things that coaches want to you know, grab from you right off the bat. Um, and then the athlete goes into their academics. Um, and they list their GPA. If you've taken the SAT or ACT, they want to know those scores as well. Um, and then they also highlight their school honors and extracurricular activities. Um, so all coaches want to find athletes who are well-rounded. So they want to find athletes who you know, also have volunteer work, other hobbies and interests, things like that. So that's important to list as well. The other main thing on this resume are recent, you know, highlights. So this athlete is obviously a golfer, but any athlete can, you know, talk about tournament finishes. Um, they can highlight their, you know, best results, things like that. And then lastly, they list the references at the bottom. So your references can be your high school coach, your academic advisor at high, in, in high school, um, your personal trainer, a sports psychologist, uh, a personal coach, whatever it might be, um, you know, college coaches might want to reach out to those individuals and find out a little bit more about you um, as well. The next thing is a cover letter. So you're going to want to send your resume cover letter and then I'll get to your competition schedule next, but you're going to want to send all three of these things at the same time. So your cover letter, like just like applying to any job, um, kind of discusses more about who you are as a person and tells a story that's not stated on your resume. So um, in this particular case, again, um, you have your name, contact information at the very top, and then the coach's name. The two red arrows are pointing out how this cover letter is personalized. So it's a huge turnoff for coaches um, when they think they're receiving something that's also been sent to you know, hundreds of other coaches. So the red arrows are pointing out uh, the coach's name and then the university name. The blue arrows are pointing out what your resume does not tell. 
So um, in this particular case, you might want to mention how um, good of a leader you are, um, you know, what characteristics you're going to bring to the table, um, you know, awards that you've won, uh, greatest moments so far, things like that. Um, and that'll help give the coach an idea of how well you're going to fit in with their team culture. And then lastly, the green arrow is showing um, a, a video. So you can just plug in a URL to your video. Videos are a huge um, asset to coaches. Not every coach has the budget or the time to go out and watch you, you know, in person. So by providing them with a video, it's a way for them to evaluate your talent, you know, very easily. Um, so every coach wants to see that. I highly recommend including that in your cover letter. The next slide here is your competition schedule. So I'm not sure how many athletes think to do this, but this is a great way to provide coaches a list of you know, tournaments or other competitions that you're gonna be competing in because what coach does not want to see that you're competing, right? Competition makes us better, we learn how to win, we learn how to be a leader. Um, it's also a way for the coach to track you. So here the athlete has the event name, the date, the tour, and then in this case golf course, but every athlete can do this. Um, if this is a simple high school schedule for the event name, you'll put, you know, Torrey Pines High School versus Carlsbad High School. You'll give the date and then maybe the location, which high school um, this is all taking place at. And then in red with the arrow you see I added the event URL. So um, if the event is covered online where the coach can go back and see the result, uh, this is a you know, great benefit because you know, the coach might, might say, oh, I forgot, I, I have to track Allie's uh, you know, progress. They go back and they see that I've already competed in one tournament. They can click, easily go click on this URL and see you know, my performance. So if, if your competition does have that, then I also encourage adding uh, the event URL. That way, again, the coach can go back and see your results. All right, the next uh, topic and way to market yourself is to create a profile on an online athletic recruiting network. So Be Recruited is a great um, tool to use. Um, I highly recommend beginning this when you're a freshman in high school. Uh, you can easily post your resume, cover letter, competition schedule, upload videos, photos, stats, and the, the best thing about this is it's all in one place. So coaches can easily log in and it's all right there for them. They don't have to go file through their papers and try and locate you know, your, your resume or your, your game film that you sent to them via email um, and your stats. The other great thing about doing this is that rather than having to send out new updates every time you've you know, improved, um, you can quickly just update this online and it you know, takes minutes, if not seconds, to do. Um, also, you, know, it attracts you can attract coaches to view your profile in a way that complies with NCAA rules. It's completely legal, it's completely fair, every athlete has um, access to, an, to be recruited. Um, we currently have more than 25,000 coaches searching for athletes and over 1.5 million registered athletes. Um, so clearly, this is a popular place to be for both coaches and athletes. 81% um, of our athletes with activated profiles are seen by coaches. Tens of thousands of student athletes successfully are recruited. And 85% of those um, athletes who have committed have received scholarship. So this is a great tool. Um, if you're interested, I encourage you to create a free profile. You can do that right after this webinar. Uh, go to www.berecruited.com. In this slide, there's a small desktop here. It just has a screenshot of a profile. As you can see, it has all your information, your stats, um, game film, photos, all that good stuff right there. So it's really easy to do. The third thing I'm going to cover um, in, in a way to market yourself is to email coaches on a consistent basis. Now, they might not respond because you might be too young. But trust me, they're reading. I've talked to several coaches about this. I know from my own experience, coaches are reading nearly every email that they receive. Um, but the fact is they can't email you back until September 1st of your junior year of high school. 
So if you are younger than that, um, don't expect a reply. Um, but please continue sending emails because coaches love this. So I have here late sophomore and junior year. I encourage you to start doing this, maybe second semester, sophomore year, and all throughout your junior year. Email coaches every four to six weeks and update them on your competition results and or improvements. So four to six weeks might sound like a lot, but if you think about it, it's only eight emails every year. It's really not that much. If you're um, in the middle of competition, um, within these emails you would include your results from your competitions plus a good, better how. Now what's a good, better how? So uh, a lot of collegiate ath athletes do this, but good, better how is after every competition you write down what you did well, what you could have done better, and how you're going to do it better. So for me, for a golfer, you know, I hit 98% of my fairways. I could have made more four-footers. How I'm going to improve for the next week, I'm going to work on my six feet and in. Um, if you're not competing, coaches still want updates. They want to know things that you're working on, maybe even your grades, improvements you've seen, newspaper articles, whatever it is. The key here is just to keep the conversation going. Um, the next thing that you can update coaches on is, you know, if you've had a competition schedule change, coaches want to know, maybe you pulled out of this tournament, um, but you've added this other tournament to your schedule. Um, and then the last thing is congratulate coaches on their team finishes. So more than likely, their team is competing at the very same time you're competing. They want to see that you're following them and that you're excited about their program. Um, so that just wins you brownie points there, but it's a great idea. And then the last thing is to call coaches and introduce yourself. And while you're doing that, maybe schedule an unofficial visit. So this is completely scary. I get it. Um, you know, most of you guys are pretty young and you're not, you know, comfortable calling a coach. Um, but when you do feel comfortable, I encourage athletes to call coaches and introduce themselves. Uh, because the fact is not everyone is brave enough to call. So you're going to set yourself apart. Um, and then while you're on the phone with them, schedule an unofficial visit if it's realistic. Uh, not everyone can afford to travel all over the country visiting all these schools, but if it's within reason, you can drive there. It's a quick hour flight. Um, I do encourage you to take a couple unofficial visits because this is all part of the research. Um, another benefit to unofficial visits um, is that you can see the practice facilities, training facilities, uh, you get one-on-one -on -one time with the coach. You can pretty much ask them anything, um, and then they really get to know you. So that's your time to be in the spotlight and show them what you're all about. Um, now, uh, if you've been building a relationship via email with coaches for the past 6 to 12 months, then this phone call is going to be easier because you've already established that relationship. So again, start emailing coaches, slowly work your way up to the phone call. Um, here's an example of a conversation I just quickly made up, but, you know, it could go, Hi, Coach Goodman, this is Roseanne Niven from San Diego, California, and I'm a 2014 grad. How are you? Coach answers, I know I've been sending you emails, but I just wanted to introduce myself over the phone and let you know that I'm really interested in your program and was hoping I could ask you some questions. More than likely, the coach is going to be super excited to hear from you and totally open to answering all your questions. Um, I've uh, listed some questions here for you that you can jot down if you'd like. Um, you know, you're probably going to want to know how many players do you usually carry on your roster every year. Now, the benefit to this question is you can easily go onto the university website and see that, that this coach currently has 20 players, five of which are seniors in high school, or sorry, in college. And so then you know that for your recruiting class, that, you know, that coach is probably going to be looking for anywhere between four and six players. So you kind of, you know, can gauge what your chances are of, of getting onto that roster. Um, the next question is, what are some things I can do to keep your interest in me? What academic goals should I set for myself to meet your university requirements? What athletic goals should I set for myself to meet your team's needs? And if I visited your university, would I be able to meet you? If so, when would be the best time for you in the next four to six weeks? Now, you want to schedule a firm date on the phone, um, and you want to try and schedule something that's not too far 
you know, out there, something that's, you know, pretty close to the, the time of this phone conversation because six months from now you don't want the coach to be like, oh, yeah, I scheduled an unofficial visit with Allison Goodman. Um, so I encourage to schedule the firm date right there on the phone. Um, now, here's just some uh, quotes and uh, from athletes that I've come across at Be Recruited, so you know it's, just, it's not just me giving you this advice. Um, Aaron Allen, who committed to the University of Arkansas, said, start early, be persistent, keep your grades up, especially if you want to participate in Division I athletics. Contact coaches any way you can, email letters and send film. So I think Aaron would agree that, you know, being persistent is a huge asset and that's uh, key in this whole process. Samantha Brennan committed to the U United States Naval Academy, good for her. Um, she said, get your name out there. Have as many options as possible. You never know what might catch your eye. Now, I totally agree with Samantha. Um, when you're first starting this recruiting process, I completely encourage you to keep your options open. Start making a list of anywhere between 20 to 30 plus schools. Yeah, 20 to 30 plus schools. The reason why I say that is because you're writing down 20 to 30 plus schools, but every coach is writing down several hundreds of athletes that they're, re they're, they're recruiting. So it is a little bit of a game. Um, you want to keep your options open because they certainly are as well. All right, to switch gears here a little bit, um, I'm just going to quickly cover the do's and don'ts for parents. And, you know, this all stems from things that I saw and experienced as a coach, um, things that were kind of turnoffs for me. Um, so to start off with, parents' role in the recruiting process. Your main role really is to help research colleges. You know your children best, but in, at the end of the day, the athlete is the one making this decision. They're the one who's going to be playing on the team for four years. Um, and so ultimately, it really does need to be their decision. But help them research colleges. Uh, be supportive and encouraging. Help make the initial connection with coaches. So again, I just covered you know, making this phone call to coaches. It's totally OK for the parent to call and make the initial connection. But as the process gets more serious, the athlete really should pick up the phone, you know, during their junior year and have this phone conversation with the coaches as well. Um, help prepare athletes for uh, interaction, communication with coaches. So, you know, role playing uh, with, your, with your athlete and, you know, coming up with some questions to ask. Um, and just have a simple conversation about, you know, the do's and don'ts on the phone with the coach just so it's not maybe an awkward conversation. Um, all right, the do's for parents. Help guide the athlete's decision-making, but don't make the de decision. Again, the athlete's the one who's going to be spending four years at this college. Practice things to say to coaches and allow the athlete to speak and talk about themselves. This is the time for the athlete to really be in the spotlight, so let them show off who they are. Um, and, and, you know, what the coach wants to know what they're going to be able to add to the team and the culture. So... It really is important for the coach to get to know the athlete, not just the parent. Help draft up emails, but ultimately let the athlete write the email. Again, this is, you know, the athlete's process. So help them, encourage them, support them, but ultimately let them kind of, you know, take the reins. Encourage athletes to talk on unofficial visits. So I put this here uh, because coaches are recruiting athletes, not parents. And, you know, some of my most memorable uh, unofficial visits were the parent would walk into our office with the athlete and they'd sit down and the parent would just talk the entire time. And that's great, but again, we're recruiting the athlete, not the parent. So we kind of want to, you know, get to know the athlete as well. Um, and this is a, you know, a great time to let the athlete shine in the spotlight. Um, and then the other do is research NCAA rules so you know what coaches can and cannot do. A common thing that I see at Be Recruited as community manager is you know, parents are wondering, why aren't coaches reaching out to me? Um, and then, you know, I see that their athlete's only a freshman or a sophomore in high school. Well, research the rules because, you know, the fact is that coaches can only do so much for these athletes. Um, all right, the two don'ts. I only have two here. Uh, don't be the overwhelming parent who calls coaches weekly. Um, you know, we love to see that you're interested but if it gets to the point where you're kind of becoming the overwhelming, annoying parent, unfortunately, the coach starts to take that out on the athlete. Um, 
because, you know, we, we kind of think in the future, we don't really want the phone calls coming in weekly if, if this athlete is on our roster. Um, and don't ask about scholarship in your first interaction with coaches. So this is a touchy, you know, subject for both parties. Um, it is an uncomfortable conversation, but um, it's a conversation that will happen. It's just meant to happen further down, down the road when you have established more of a relationship with the coach and you know that things are becoming more serious. Um, so save that for later on and definitely do this over the phone or in person. It's not something that should be done over email. All right, so that's it for me. So far. I'm going to take some questions and answer them. Uh, before I get into that, though, we're currently, um, you know, uh, giving you guys a $10 discount on a deluxe lifetime membership. Um, if you're interested, uh, just click that link that I've provided right here. The offer ends this coming Sunday, August 18th. Um, and then if you do have any other questions after this webinar, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy to give advice or other questions, you can contact me at contact at berecruited.com. Um, all right, I have a question here from Rebecca. Uh, can we get a copy of your slides? Uh, I believe this will be posted later on. Uh, if you'd like to follow up with me at contact at berecruited.com, I'd be happy to give you more information on that. Um, all right, so another question. What age did you start the recruiting process? Uh, personally, I started the <laughs> recruiting process kind of early. I started getting questionnaires 8th, uh, ninth grade. Um, so questionnaires are also a great tool for marketing in a way. Uh, if a coach sends you a, mar a questionnaire, that means that they're somewhat interested in you and they want to keep following your progress. So if you do get a questionnaire in the mail, uh, definitely fill it out and send it back in a timely manner because that's kind of what puts you on the coach's radar and that's the way for them to track you because that's how they obtain your contact information. Uh, next question, what if I am entering into my junior year of high school and need to catch up with the timeline you suggested? Is it too late? Absolutely not. Um, I don't think it's ever really too late, but the reality is that there are athletes who are going to be starting this a lot earlier, earlier than you. So if you are starting a little bit later, I encourage you to be extremely proactive, um, organize the necessary materials, um, and send them out um, as soon as possible because you do have a little bit of catching up to do. Um, next question, what if coaches aren't responding to my emails? How do I know that they are reading them? Um, so again, uh, if if you haven't heard from a coach uh, before September 1st of your junior year, that is normal because uh, NCAA rules uh, do not allow coaches to uh, email you back. So um, again, I suggested sending your emails out second semester, sophomore year. I realize you're not going to hear back from coaches, but the point of this is to be persistent and show the coach that you really are interested in, um, in their program and being part of their program. Um, all right, uh, what kinds of questions should I ask on an unofficial visit? Another great question. So again, unofficial visits, this is, a, this is a, your time to show coaches what you're all about, um, just as much as it is for you to find out more about their program. So um, you might want to know what the coach's coaching philosophy is, um, or what is your coaching history, right? Like, did you just start coaching last year, or have you been at three different universities? You've slowly, you know, worked your way up, and um, you do know what you're doing. Um, where do you see a player like myself, uh, you know, fitting into your roster? So that's an important question as well that can kind of gauge, um, you know, your chances of fitting in on this team. You know, if, if they say, um, as a freshman, I see you, uh, you know, definitely – starting on the team, then that's a good sign. Uh, but coach is probably going to be pretty honest with you, and, and if they don't see you fitting in, they're going to tell you what goals they would like you to accomplish um, so you do fit in. Um, another question is, you know, what's your practice schedule or weight training schedule? Um, the reason why I think this is important is because, um, you know, if you're trying to become a, a pre-med student, 
and your practice schedule is, you know, set in stone and you can't take classes for that, that's something that you need to know um, because that might change your decision on the university. If you can't take those classes, then you're not going to be majoring in pre-med. Um, so I think you should know those questions. Um, and then, uh, you know, another great question is, what um, academic support do you provide for your student athletes? A lot of uh, universities will have a separate academic support staff um, who puts together a plan for almost every athlete there, uh, whether it's a mandatory 10 hours of study hours every week or you know one-on-one -on -one tutoring or whatever it might be. That's another important thing because um, you know managing your academics is. Uh, very important and can be stressful while you're also managing and balancing your athletics. So you want to know what kind of support you're going to have there as well. Um, all right, next question. Um, you talked about the recruiting process for athletes, but can you describe what the recruiting process is like for coaches? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so again, it's, it's actually almost very similar. Um, Every athlete's going to start off with a list of, again, 20 to 30 plus um, uh, universities that they're interested in. The coach is also going to put together a list of, you know, several athletes. Depending on your sport, it could go anywhere from 50 to 100 athletes. Um, so the sad thing is that they're going to start off with a name and then a stat and maybe a graduation year. And then slowly they're going to get to know these players. Um, so you're going to start off as just a name and then with persistence, with emails and all that, the coach is going to get to know you and hopefully your relationship is going to grow. And then that pool of 50 to 100 athletes is going to slowly decrease into, you know, a top 20 list and then maybe even a top 10 list and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the recruiting process. Um, again, coaches start off with a very long list and then it slowly um, goes down to their top priority athletes. Um, what? I have another question here. At what point in the process would someone send the cover letter resume and schedule? My son is a junior in high school playing basketball. So um, I advise sending out your you know, resume, cover letter, and schedule as soon as possible. If your son is a junior in high school, Now's a great time to send that out. Junior year is one of the more important years um, because you basically have a year until um, you start, you know, getting verbal commitments. So to answer your question, I would send those out as soon as possible. For those who have athletes who are younger than juniors, um, again, send those out as soon as possible. Even if you're a freshman or sophomore, that's also a great time. You can always update it, send it out again. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Should I give coaches my phone number in an email? Yeah, definitely. There's absolutely no problem with sending coaches your phone number. Again, um, coaches cannot call you until uh, July 1st after your junior year of high school. So if you are younger than that, don't expect a phone call from them. But if you are post July 1st, um, after your junior year of high school, then definitely give it to them. Um, worst case, they're going to file your contact information away and uh, reach out to you when the appropriate time comes. So definitely include your contact information. Do you recommend LinkedIn or Facebook profiles? Um, for athletes for LinkedIn, I'm not sure that's a common thing. Um, for Facebook profiles, here's my recommendation with uh, social media. Um, these days, kids post a lot of different things on them. Um, so unless you're monitoring that, um, I would almost say stay away from social media, um, putting together a Facebook profile. But, um, and the only reason why I say that is because, you know, one bad picture or comment and the coach starts to have um, negative feelings. So I would almost say stay away from that. If you do post that, then, then please monitor that um, and make sure that it's completely appropriate. What if I accidentally break 
an NCAA recruiting rule. Um, so I'm guessing um, it, it, it depends on what the NCAA recruiting rule is, but you know, generally if you, let's say a coach is out watching you at a tournament um, and you go up to talk to them when you're not supposed to, the coach knows what the recruiting rules are. Uh, every year the coach has to take a test um, and become basically, if they don't pass the test, they're not allowed to recruit. So they have to pa pass this test yearly. So they know the rules. So if you as a parent or athlete were to go up to a coach and break a rule, the coach is going to let you know in a very nice way that they are unfortunately not, you know, able to talk to you um, or, or whatever. They might say, hi, nice to meet you. Unfortunately, NCAA rules prohibit me from you know, talking to you, but please send me an email with all your contact information. I'll follow you. So uh, they'll be very short with you. Um, don't be offended, but the coach knows the rules and they'll, they'll set you straight. Um, and that's, that's that. Um, all right. If there aren't any other questions, then I'd like to thank you again um, for joining me today. If you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to contact me again at contact at berecruited.com. Again, my name is Allison Goodman, and I wish you the best in the recruiting process.